Hello everyone, welcome in the video lecture of integrated circuits. I am Anu Goyal, assistant professor in the department of Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss monostable multivibrator with the help of operational amplifier. So, let us start with the introduction of multivibrator. We can realize many applications with the help of operational amplifier. We can realize linear applications as well as non-linear applications with the help of OPAM. Though OPAM is uh, an analog linear IC, but we can realize non-linear applications with the help of operational amplifier. One of the uh, non-linear application that we can realize with the help of OPAM is multivibrators. What is multivibrators? Multivibrator is actually a name given to the family of non-linear oscillators. What is oscillator? Oscillator is a kind of circuit which is used to generate the signals, specifically waveforms. We know, uh, we have studied that with the help of oscillator, wind bridge oscillator, RC phase shift oscillator, we can generate sinusoidal waveforms. But if we want to generate non-linear waveforms, then we have to go towards the non-linear oscillators. And the name given to the family of non-linear oscillator is multivibrator. So, what we can say, a multivibrator is an electronic circuit that generates a square waveform, rectangular waveform, pulse signal and uh, is also called as non-linear oscillators. Okay? So, it is actually a kind of function generator where we can have non-linear waveforms at the output. This multivibrator finds variety of applications in uh, generating square waveforms or in the applications where time is involved. So, to develop time based application, we can use multivibrators. Multivibrators basically of uh, three types, are stable, monostable and biostable. But in our syllabus of integrated circuit, we have to study the two types of multivibrators that is monostable multivibrator and a stable multivibrator. In today's video lecture, we are going to discuss about the monostable multivibrator in detail. Okay? So, let us start with the introduction of monostable multivibrator. What is monostable multivibrator? Monostable multivibrator is a circuit which is also known as one shot multivibrator. Another name of this monostable multivibrator is one shot multivibrator. As the name indicates, what is monostable multivibrator? It is a kind of multivibrator we, where we will have monostable state. Mono means single. So, at the output of this multivibrator, we will have only one stable state. What uh, do we mean by stable states? Because it is non-linear application of a PAM, the output of the multivibrator can be either plus V set or minus V set. Plus V set or minus V set means the saturated output. Saturated output means the maximum value of the output that we can have from the OPAM. What is the maximum value of output that we can get from the OPAM? That is equals to plus minus VCC. So, if we are getting plus VCC at the output, it is called as plus V saturation or plus V set. Plus V set. Or if we are getting the maximum of minus VCC at the output, it will be called as minus V set or the minus V saturated value. So, at the output of multivibrator, our multivibrator can be either in plus V saturation or in minus V saturation. In monostable multivibrator, out of these two states, one state is uh, one state will be stable. So that is why the name of the circuit is called as monostable multivibrator. Okay. Uh, further, what is the function of this monostable multivibrator? It will have one stable state, and it will produce a single pulse of a specified duration in response to an external triggering pulse. What is the meaning of this line? When we apply some external triggering to this particular circuit, then it will generate a pulse signal 
at the output and the duration of that pulse signal is specified or is fixed. So, when an external triggering signal is applied to this monostable multi vibrator, then uh, the output changes, is, uh, changes its, its state from a stable state to another state and that another state is called as quasi stable state. The another state is called as quasi stable state. So, it will have one stable state and one quasi stable state. The quasi stable state will be achieved in corresponding to an external triggering pulse. After a certain time, when we will apply some external triggering to this circuit, then the circuit will switch its stable state to quasi stable state and after a certain time period, that uh, quasi stable state will uh, be vanished and the circuit will come back to its original stable state. So, in this way, we can say that this circuit is used to generate a single output pulse in response to an input pulse and that is why it is called as one shot multi vibrator. Monostable because it has one stable state, one shot multi vibrator because it generates a single output pulse corresponding to a single external triggering pulse. So, what is the benefit of uh, generating this output pulse at the output or uh, where we can utilize the circuit and how we can realize the circuit and how the circuit will work, we will understand in the coming slides. Just to develop more understanding about the working of this monostable multi vibrator, we can connect this monostable multi vibrator with one daily life example. We all know and uh, we have used and we often use doorbells. But how doorbells work? When uh, there will be a switch corresponding to a doorbell, when we do not press the switch, then the door doorbell remains in its off state. That off state of the doorbell, we can call it as a stable state. So, there is a doorbell and there is a switch. When no one is pressing the switch, the doorbell is in its stable state. When we want to ring the doorbell, we have to press the switch. The pressing of the switch we can consider as external triggering. So, when we press the switch, the doorbell starts ringing for a specified duration and after that, it will again come back to its stable state. If we want to ring the doorbell again, we have to press the switch again. That means, we have to again apply this external triggering pulse. So, uh, this is the very easy example that we can connect with the working of monostable multi vibrator. So, what is the meaning of all this that it is it will be in its stable state and when we will apply external triggering it will change its state from stable to quasi stable state. We can understand the working of this monostable multi vibrator with the help of this doorbell example. So, if we want to realize these kind of applications we can use this particular circuitry where we want our circuit to be in a stable state and uh, we want that circuit to operate for a certain time corresponding to some external signal applied to it. Okay? So, let us start first with the circuit diagram and the waveform of monostable multi vibrator. So, let us check first here we have the circuit diagram of monostable multi vibrator with the help of operational amplifier. Here we have the waveforms related to this, uh, related to the function of this monostable multi vibrator. One more thing, this monostable multi vibrator here we are realizing with the help of op amp. The same monostable multi vibrator we can realize with the help of another IC called triple five timer IC. Here we are using 741 op amp IC for realizing the monostable multi vibrator. But the same can be also realized with the help of triple five timer IC. There we will obviously get to more accuracy because it is uh, that triple five timer IC is dedicatedly designed for timing applications. But here we can also realize this application with the help of OPA. So when we are realizing monostable multi vibrator with the help of op uh, operational amplifier how and what components we uh, what components we uh, we require and how we are connecting them 
let us observe first at the non inverting terminal we have connected a diode d2 before d2 we have connected one capacitor and resistor in parallel this combination of capacitor and resistor in parallel is like differentiator circuit to the input of this differentiator we are applying a triggering pulse okay what this uh, differentiator a combination of capacitor and resistor will do this triggering pulse will be like a square waveform this differentiator will ensure that this triggering pulse will be converted into a negative spike and this diode will be forward biased and at this point the voltage will be sufficiently negative why we require negative voltage at this terminal we will understand when we will discuss the working of this circuit till now we have connected a diode at the non inverting terminal in reverse biasing before this diode we have connected one differentiator circuit the function of this differentiator circuit is to convert this negative triggering pulse into a negative spike then further to this diode here we have connected one potential divider network formed with the help of r1 and r2 at this point what will be the voltage let's say the voltage is vx how we can calculate this vx we can apply a potential divider between this voltage and the output voltage so what will be the value of vx it will become r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times of v out okay v out can be either plus v set or minus v set so vx will become r2 divided by r1 plus r2 either plus v set or minus v set this ratio of r2 divided by r1 plus r2 we will consider equals to beta so vx is equals to beta times of v out and this vx specifically will be equals to plus beta v set or minus beta v set depending upon the output is plus v set or minus v set okay then in the negative feedback path we have connected one feedback resistor at the inverting terminal we have connected a combination of diode and capacitor in parallel here this diode d1 is called as clamping diode what is the meaning of this clamping diode when this diode is forward biased it will clamp the capacitor voltage equals to its voltage vd1 what is this d1 d1 is clamping diode and it is used to clamp this capacitor voltage is equals to vd1 when this diode is forward biased or when it is conducting this capacitor will charge or discharge through this resistor r so this is the combination of r mono stable multi vibrator with the help of operational amplifier here we have used one diode in the reverse biasing at the non inverting terminal a potential divider network a feedback resistor a diode and capacitor in parallel and a differentiator circuit though this differentiator circuit is not very much important we can directly apply this triggering pulse to this diode but still we can use this differentiator circuit to make sure the availability of negative voltage at this point okay so let us start how the circuit will work what is the function of this circuit when we have not applied any triggering pulse then this circuit will remain in its stable state let us consider the stable state of this circuit initially is plus v saturation and we have not applied any triggering pulse to this circuit so let us connect with the waveforms the output this is the output waveform the output is plus v set till this point we have not applied any triggering pulse what is the value of capacitor voltage the uh, second waveform is showing the capacitor voltage the capacitor voltage is clamped to this vd1 diode voltage okay so let us observe what is the voltage available at inverting and non inverting terminal one more thing how this uh, how the working of this circuit will be verified or it will be justified or how the output will change its state we know that uh, it is a kind of uh, positive feedback here and we are applying 
input at the non-inverting terminal. So, at the inverting terminal, we have Vc. At the non-inverting terminal, we have voltage Vx. From the theory of comparators, voltage comparators, we know when Vc is greater than Vx, that means when the voltage at inverting terminal is greater than the voltage at non-inverting terminal, then the output will be minus V set. When the voltage at non-inverting terminal is greater than inverting terminal, then the output will be plus V set. So, all the time what the circuit will do, it will keep on comparing these two voltages Vc and Vx. If Vc is bigger than Vx, then the output is minus V set and if Vx is bigger than the Vc, then the output will be plus V set. Okay? So, we have to decide ki, uh, whether Vc is bigger or whether Vx is bigger. That we have to decide and that we have to find out. So, very initially when we have not applied any triggering pulse, then what is the value of voltage at this point Vx? We have considered that the output is in plus V saturation. That is, uh, that is, it is, uh, that is its stable state. So, when V out is plus V set, Vx will be equal to what? plus beta times of V set. Got it? So, voltage at non-inverting terminal is equals to plus beta V set. At the same time, when the output is plus V set, then through this resistor R, this capacitor will start charging towards the plus V saturation. But to corresponding to plus V set, this diode will be forward biased. When this diode will be forward biased, then this Vc will be clamped to the diode voltage VD1 that is approximately 0.7 volt. So, when we have not applied any triggering pulse, the voltage at the inverting terminal is equal to the capacitor voltage which is equals to VD1 which is equals to 0.7 volt. The voltage at the non-inverting terminal is Vx is equals to plus beta times of V set. Obviously, this voltage Vx plus beta times of V set is much greater than this Vc 0.7 volt. So, the output will maintain its stable state that is plus V saturation. Got it? So, till the time we are not applying any triggering pulse, the circuit maintain its stable state that is plus V saturation. And uh, up to this point, we have this first portion of the waveform. Triggering pulse, capacitor voltage and the output state. The moment we have applied the triggering pulse here, what is the specification of this triggering pulse? This triggering pulse must have very high negative amplitude. Okay? It should have amplitude, high value of amplitude in negative direction. The duration of this triggering pulse will be much greater than the pulse width. So, this is the specification of this triggering pulse. It must have very high amplitude but in the negative direction. So, the moment we will apply this triggering pulse of very short duration and high negative amplitude, this differentiator circuit will convert this square kind of waveform into a spike. We know when we apply a square waveform to a differentiator, the output will be a spike. So, here it is just to ensure that the negative value of this, uh, uh, that the amplitude of this triggering pulse is much higher in the negative direction. Corresponding to this negative pulse, this diode will get forward biased. Okay? When this diode will get forward biased, this negative amplitude will appear at the non-inverting terminal. The voltage at the inverting terminal is 0.7 volt. The voltage at the inver non-inverting terminal is equal to this negative amplitude. The value of this uh, triggering pulse in the negative direction is uh, that much negative that the voltage at this point will become much lesser than this Vc. Prior to the triggering pulse, the voltage at this point is plus beta V set. But when we have applied this triggering pulse of a very high negative amplitude, the voltage at non-inverting terminal becomes much lesser than the voltage at inverting terminal. Now, the voltage at inverting terminal is higher. So, the output will change its state from plus V set to minus V set. Getting? 
so when the output changes its state from plus v set to minus uh, v set let us observe the waveform here the moment we have applied the triggering pulse the output is uh, has changed its state from plus v set to minus v set fine now the output is equals to minus v set when the output is minus v set then through this resistor r this diode will become reverse biased that means it will become open circuit when this diode will become open circuit then this capacitor is free to charge towards the minus v saturation okay so when this capacitor is free to charge towards the minus v saturation what will happen initially the voltage of the capacitor is 0.7 volt that is vd1 now it will start charging towards the minus v saturation or what we can say it is discharging from vd1 to minus v saturation now the voltage at non inverting terminal is equals to what minus beta v set the output has changes its state from plus v set to minus v set the voltage vx will become minus beta v set this triggering pulse was of very short duration it came and gone the voltage at this uh, point vc is uh, initially was 0.7 volt and uh, when the output changes its state from plus v set to minus v set this voltage will keep on decreasing fine uh, this voltage will all uh, the this voltage all the time will be compared to this vx till the point this voltage is higher than this voltage the output will maintain its quasi stable state that is minus v saturation the moment will come when this vc will become slightly more negative than minus beta v set which is the voltage at non inverting terminal when this vc is charging towards the minus v saturation a moment will come when this voltage will become slightly more negative than this minus beta v set then the output will again change its state from minus v set to plus v set what is happening till the voltage across the capacitor is higher than the voltage across the non inverting terminal the output will be in its quasi stable state the moment this capacitor voltage because it is keep on decreasing the moment this capacitor voltage become lesser than this voltage the output will again change its state from minus v set to plus v set okay so when the output will become plus v set again then the diode will become forward biased again and this capacitor now will charging towards the plus v saturation but it will be clamped to the diode voltage that is 0.7 volt and the output will maintain its stable state till the next triggering pulse will be applied okay got it how the circuit is working the moment we have not applied any triggering pulse the circuit is maintaining its stable state how this state is changing the change of state is depending upon the voltage is available at the inverting and non inverting terminal so we have to find out whether uh, the voltage at inverting terminal is higher or whether the voltage at non inverting terminal is higher when a negative triggering pulse is applied then the output will change its state from minus v set of plus v set to minus v set this minus v set which is the quasi stable state will be maintained till the capacitor reach to the value minus beta v set when this voltage will become again lesser than this voltage the output will again switch from minus v set to plus v set that is its stable state so this is how our circuit is operating got it so this is the working of our mono stable multi vibrator with the help of operational amplifier now we can design this circuit for this specified duration we can decide the duration of quasi stable state how we can decide this uh, duration of quasi stable state for this we have one small derivation let us observe so this duration of quasi stable state is depending on which component it is depending upon the discharging of this capacitor this capacitor is responsible uh, for deciding the quasi stable state and it is discharging To, uh, through this resistor r so we can start our derivation by writing the voltage across the capacitor here first we will write down the standard equation the general equation the voltage across the capacitor how we can mention the voltage across the capacitor 
it is equals to the final voltage plus V in minus V final exponential minus T by RC. This is the general equation of the capacitor voltage. Now, we will put the value of these terms according to the working of our circuit. First, what is the initial voltage across the capacitor when no triggering pulse is applied? The initial voltage is VD1. That is the diode voltage that is approximately 0.7 volt. What is the capacitor voltage up to which point this capacitor voltage will go when we have applied the triggering pulse at T is equals to T. This capacitor voltage will go up to minus of beta V set at T is equals to T. Fine. What is the final state of our circuit when we applied the triggering pulse? The final state of the circuit is minus of V saturation that is the quasi stable state. So, we will put all these three value in our equation. So, when we will put all these three values in our equation, what our equation will become? Vc is equals to minus V set plus Vd1 minus minus 1 will become plus exponential of minus T by Rc. At T is equals to T, Vc is equals to minus of beta V set. We will put minus beta V set instead of Vc and we will get this equation minus beta V set is equals to the initial final voltage minus V set, initial voltage Vd1. Here it is mentioned Vd because in our circuit diagram we have used the labeling of uh, this diode as D1, we can we will use the same notation in our derivation also. So, it will become Vd1. We can use any notation, but the notation we are using in our circuit diagram, we have to follow in our derivation also. Okay? So, the equation will become minus beta V set minus beta V set plus Vd1 plus v, uh, v set exponential minus capital T by Rc. Now, we will rearrange this equation. We will uh, move this minus V set to the uh, left side, we will get and uh, Vd1 plus V set uh, another side. So, we will get Vd1 plus V set exponential minus T by Rc is equals to V set minus beta V set. In the next term, we will take V saturation common from this term. What we will get? We will get Vd1 plus V set e raised to the power minus T by Rc. Here from this we will take V saturation common. So, we will left with V set into 1 minus beta. We will divide this term with V set. We will get V d 1 by V set. V set by V set will become 1. E raised to the power minus T by R c is equal to 1 minus beta. In this derivation, what we want to find out? We want to find out the duration of output pulse width or we want to find out the width that is the duration width of the output pulse. We want to find out the value of this capital T. We are required to extract this capital T from this equation. This capital T is in the power of exponential. We know how we can eliminate exponential by taking natural log. So, in this derivation, our aim is to extract this capital T for which we are doing or we are making arrangements. Further solving this, this equation, we will uh, get e raised to the power mi uh, minus t by Rc, 1 minus beta divided by this whole term Vd by V set plus 1. Further, after certain rearrangement, when we want to extract this T1 or the capital T, that is the duration of the quasi stable state, we will consider natural log both sides. So, when we will take natural log both sides, just observe uh, one more thing, here we have minus T by Rc. So, here what we have done, we have taken the reciprocal of exponential 1 upon e raised to the power T1 by Rc to eliminate the minus sign. So, the term on the right hand side will be inverted in this particular, uh, at this particular point. Okay? So, till this, here we have e raised to the power minus T by Rc 1 minus beta by Vd1 by B set plus 1, here we have e raised to the power T1 by Rc, Vd1 by V set plus 1 divided by 1 minus beta and we have eliminated the negative sign. 
now to extract this capital T, we have taken the natural log both sides. When we have taken the natural log both sides, here we will left with T1 by RC and it will become ln Vd by Vz plus 1, 1 minus beta. Uh, moving RC to the another another side of the derivation, we will get T1 is equals to RC ln Vd by Vz plus 1 divided by 1 minus beta. This is the actual relationship of the output pulse width and the components used in the circuitry. Fine. In this equation, what we can observe? We can observe the ratio of Vd1 upon Vz. Vd1 is the uh, by, uh, voltage across the diode D1 and Vz is the maximum or the saturated value of the op-amp. Obviously, Vz will be much greater than Vd1. Vd1 is much greater than, uh, Vz is much greater than Vd. So, we can neglect this ratio Vd by Vz. This ratio will be very much lesser than the 1. So, our equation will become T is equals to RC ln 1 upon 1 minus beta. Do not get confused with this 1. It is just to differentiate. It is the same T we are using from the starting. Okay. So, T is equals to RC ln 1 upon 1 minus beta. What is a beta? Beta we have used R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So, if we will consider the value of both register in the potential divider network to be same, then this beta will become 0.5 when R1 is equals to R2. So, when we will put this value of beta in our equation, what our equation will become? T is equals to RC ln 1 upon 1 minus 0.5 that is 1 upon 0.5 that is RC ln 2. When we will calculate the natural log 2, it will come around 0.69. So, what is the value of capital T will become? The value of capital T will become 0.69 times of RC, where this R is this feedback resistor R and the capacitor is this uh, connected at the inverting terminal. So, this is the actual or uh, value, this is the actual value we can say if we are considering this uh, condition, uh, actual value of the width of the output pulse or we can say for this much of duration, the circuit will uh, uh, acquire the quasi stable state or it will change its output from a stable state to quasi stable state. So, by selecting a proper value of resistor and capacitor, we can design our monostable multi vibrator for our desired duration of the output pulse. So, this is the relationship of the monostable multi, uh, the, this is the relationship between the monostable uh, out width of the output pulse and resistor and capacitor with the help of which we can design our circuit diagram. Fine. So, this is all about the monostable multi vibrator with the help of OPAP. Thank you everyone.